On the 13th day of October, Halloween gave to me 13 prices bleeding, 12 models dying, 11 Bettys baking, 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 Goldwyn shooting, 6 psychics scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 aliens spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to Lucky 13, the 13th day of our 31 days of Halloween. I, of course, am Bo, your host and companion on this journey through uh, another 31 horror films uh, like we've done the past two years. This is the third anniversary, which I uh, I really like. Uh, may there be a hundred more. So, <laughs> are there 3,300 or 3,100 horror movies we can talk about? Probably, you know, but by year 98, we're like... Creep van, number 17 this month. Uh, there's a van and it creeps. So, <laughs> anyway, we're talking about classic horror movies, though, this time around. And, uh, yeah, so this is The Mask of the Red Death. And uh, what to say about it? All right, so first of all, wh which of the three categories does Mask of the Red Death fall into? Well, I'd never seen it before. Uh, this was a, a new watch for me. I've seen Pit and the Pendulum. In fact, we did Pit and the Pendulum uh, recently on, on 31 Days of Halloween, by which I mean probably last year, I think, is when Pit and the Pendulum reared its head, or maybe... No, no, no. It was the first year we did it, now up on uh, Closer Inspection. And, uh, yeah, so that was one I hadn't seen before at the time. And, uh, you know, the, the Roger Corman Poe stuff was a weird... Uh, a gap in my horror knowledge. Like, I knew he did it all. I knew it was well-regarded. But you, it, it's tough to get over that sort of Corman vibe, that, that idea that, hey, it's Roger Corman, and therefore it's going to be cheap. And that's unfortunate because Roger Corman is a pretty good filmmaker so long as, as he's not, you know, producing something on the cheap. I was watching one of those... Uh, uh, in Search of Darkness uh, things the other night. And uh, they were talking about Corman producing Humanoids from the Deep and saying like, hey, it's an R-rated movie. We're going to earn our R rating. I want lots of blood and lots of rape. And that's a little unfortunate, right? That's not something you want to hear a producer say. But, you know, that was sort of what you associated Corman with. Uh, very famously, he said... He said that he never lost a penny um, making movies. That he made them cheap enough that they were, you know, as long as they were salacious enough or, uh, or you know, seductive enough to a viewer, then, you know, people would turn out for these movies. And he, he like, you can't fault him for that. You know, the guy sort of had his finger on the pulse or at least knew enough that, hey, I'm going to make this really cheap. I'm going to turn this around the title or the poster or the performers, or there's going to be something about this combination that is going to get people in the seats or get people to rent it or whatever. And, and it worked out for him. So, you know, God bless Roger Corman is, uh, sort of an unsung hero in Hollywood. I think that he, you know, when he made movies for realsies, uh, and he wasn't just trying to make a buck, he made good movies and case in point, the Mask of the Red Death, which uh, he directed. And the one thing that strikes you as soon as you see it is, again, that kind of Technicolor color palette. Everything is very striking. It's a beautiful movie to look at. And then we get, you know, we just recently talked about Vincent Price with uh, the Witchfinder General, or Witchfinder General, not the Witchfinder General, no determinant there. But Witchfinder General is sort of Price at his mustache twirling best. Um, and I think, you know, un unexpectedly, and it, and it was unplanned, but The Mask of the Red Death is in that same vein, where you get to see Price as the villain being as, as evil as you want him to be. And in this case, he is playing, 
you know, this lord of, of an area that is uh, uh, being um, ravaged by the Red Death. And be, ravaged, like, you don't see a lot of it. It's just sort of hovering in the background. But at the beginning of the movie, he ends up going to uh, this little village and, and torturing um, a man and the man's future father-in-law and for being seditious and is going to have them murdered. And this young girl is like, no, 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 I beg of you. This is my father and this is the man I'm going to marry. Please show some mercy. And what Vincent Price looks at this as, as an opportunity to seduce and corrupt this young girl. Because what we learned pretty quickly is that Vincent Price is and his wife and uh, seemingly others in his court are just worshipers of Satan. And uh, so his idea is like, oh, I'm going to take this young pretty girl and make her a follower of Satan as well. And that I'm going to, you know, corrupt her Christian values and, and make her as evil as I am. And... Uh, so he brings the, you know, the father, the would be husband and the girl all back to the, the castle, throws the father and, uh, and the would be husband in jail in the, the dungeon of the castle and then begins, you know, courting and, and trying to corrupt, uh, this young girl. And so there are a number of members of the court that, uh, are kind of in play in particular there is oh what is uh, patrick mcgee who you may know as the dude what goes crazy in um a clockwork orange he is the uh the guy whose wife is way uh, raped during that assault and then later um, you know kind of stages his uh his revenge against alex delong and um he is sort of uh, a mover and shaker trying to work his way up in, in Vincent Price's Prince Prospero's uh, good graces or evil graces. There's Juliana, the, the queen, uh, as played by Hazel Court, who is uh, feeling threatened by this new beautiful young girl who has, you know, come into the, the castle. And so she is trying to court the favor of Satan to prove that, no, oh, no, 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 I'm way more diabolical than, uh, the, than this girl ever could be. Like you want, you want me, you know, I'm, I am your true, uh, love, your true mate. And there's also, uh, a couple of little people that come to the castle as entertainment. Uh, one of them is a dancer. Uh, the, the woman is a dancer and, um, you know, the, Basically, uh, uh, Patrick McGee at one point gives her, the little person dancer, a smack across the jaw for having the insolence to kind of stumble and touch him. And so there was also this sort of machination to get revenge there, which is one of my favorite parts of the movie where the 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 guy, the presumed like lover, husband of the dancer... Um, pretends that like, oh, I'm on your side, Patrick McGee. And in fact, there's going to be this grand ball. And let me tell you how you can impress everyone at the court. And it's basically a revenge plot for him to kill uh, Patrick McGee. And so Prospero uh, runs about when, he, when he's originally taking uh, all these people hostage at the beginning of the movie, he realizes that this old woman in town has the Red Death, which just makes your face bleed and, you know, makes your face red, hence uh, Red Death. And so he just shuts everything down. He's going to hole up in the castle, let everybody in the town die. And, you know, once the, the threat is done, he'll reopen the castle and, you know, be ruler of a, a city of corpses one presumes uh or just whoever survives survives great um but uh yeah so you know uh during the course of this you know prospero sort of exercises his uh his penchant for humiliating his guests there's a, a really terrific scene where he makes all of the uh members of his court act like certain animals and until everybody in the court is just running around acting like beasts. Um, 
And, you know, there's all kinds of like these wonderful, weird little scenes. Like there's a, a, a scene where Juliana decides that she is going to become a true bride of Satan. And in so doing, uh, has this kind of crazy head trip that I ends up leaving her, uh, you know, bananas and dead ultimately. And, you know, Vincent Price just it, it, like roams through the movie talking about like my master, uh, my master Satan. And it's, it's so good. It's, it, it's a terrific movie. It's a morality play. And here's the, the other thing that I really, really like about the mask of the red death is that it is steeped in kind of not quite surrealism. There are, there are surrealist touches, but almost this Greek chorus of fates that show up at the beginning of the movie and more so at the end of the movie where all these different versions of death converge to kind of talk about what they've been up to. And it, it's a strangely like stagey kind of moment in the movie and the movie, you know, there are sets and, and that kind of thing. Uh, as much as the movie looks gorgeous, it's, you know, clearly all this was done on, on a soundstage and with sets and that kind of thing. But I, I love that stuff. I, I like a, a movie of this era, um, being the, you know, early to mid sixties. In fact, this movie is 64 is when mask of the red death, uh, hits and it, it's just terrific. It, it, it's really wonderful. I, I, you know, surprise, surprise. If you've ever read the story, um, the red death does in fact, uh, make uh, its way into the castle and it becomes a strange like dance scene like an interpretive dance scene you know it's one of those things of like you just have to see it and it's wonderful it it's impressionistic and a, a touch surreal and for all the you know kind of kitschy 60s Vincent Price performing Roger Corman was setting out to actually make a thoughtful interesting movie and I think that's what he accomplished. I think this is a thoughtful and interesting movie. Um, it, you know, it deals with some of the grander ideas of, you know, corruption of power and, and how evil sort of cannibalizes itself, uh, that you can't escape death, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter what bargains you make with whatever dark Lord death still ends up, you know, coming to us all. And, all of that stuff I find really thematically interesting and you can't not enjoy Vincent Price in this movie. He is, he is terrific. All the uh, actors are actually quite good and are, are seemingly bought in to what they're doing. And, uh, you know, this is going back to the earlier conversation about Corman making movies on the cheap, but when he wanted to make a good movie, he had chops. And this was him making a film that was meaningful and was, you know, an, an interesting exploration of morality and power and, you know, classism. And, you know, there are a lot of, of different uh, essays that you could write about this movie. And I, I think that is not just to the movie's credit. It's what makes the movie kind of amazing. And Pit and the Pendulum w was the same way, but I, I like Mask of the Red Death more than I do Pit and the Pendulum. Uh, Pit and the Pendulum is much more of a, like, you know, a gothic, uh, sort of mystery and, and horror film where Mask of the Red Death, it, it just has headier ideas. It's, it, it's just got more on its plate in terms of what it's trying to achieve. And, uh, Vincent Price is, is just digging into the role is, is really, uh, enjoying himself, but also not being campy. Like he's taking it seriously. Um, you know, and, and the notion of him like corrupting this young woman is really like eerie and unsettling. It's a terrific movie. I can't, I can't say enough good things about, uh, the mask of the red death. There's a, a great moment where he talks about how you train a Falcon. That is this thinly veiled metaphor for this is how I'm going to make you an evil person. And I'm going to, you know, step by step kind of guide you into this world where, um, you know, your, your villainy, your evil is not just expected. It's rewarded as opposed to, you, you know, your faith and your father and, and your would be husband down in the dungeon below. So yeah, the terrific, terrific movie. Uh, can't say enough good things about it. Um, and it, it's a great Halloween movie. Like 
put it on, uh, you know, it might lose some of the younger kids because it, it really is a little bit heady. And, and also when it lapses into its interpretive dance moments and things like that, like it's going for art. And if you are looking for a movie that is just going to be uh, sort of silly and goofy, that's really not what Mask of the Red Death is. It's a, a lot more, a, a lot more thoughtful than that. And and that's what I, I really like about it. like Pit in the Pendulum is your hey, this is going to be this kind of campy '60s Poe adaptation. Uh, still really good, but uh, Mask of the Red Death a uh, lot more. A lot more uh, brains in its head than uh, a lot of horror movies of this stripe. So uh, I encourage you, if you have never seen it, you absolutely should see The Mask of the Red Death. A terrific, terrific movie. All right, so that's going to do it for our 13th day. I am uh, just a few days away from being back in town, so please uh, drop me a line. Uh, if you go to the post for... Uh, this particular episode, which will be on the front page of legionpodcasts.com. Uh, there you can uh, click on the post and it'll, uh, in the description, the show notes, uh, there is, uh, or there are links to all of the social media sites and uh, particularly the uh, the Discord channel is, is where you can often find me. I check in on that uh, frequently. The others, eh, you know, once every day or two, I check in on the other social media feeds. Uh, so, you know, if you if you message me on uh, on Facebook or Twitter, uh, it'll take me a little longer to get back to you. But if you want to hop over and join the discussion on Discord, that's uh, generally where I am. I will be back in town uh, on the 16th, uh, and I will catch up with everyone then. Uh, also, be sure you are subscribing to the uh, Legion Podcast feed if you're listening to this on the Dark Parade. If you are listening to this on the Legion Podcast feed, I encourage you to check out the Dark Parade, which is uh, the show that I do on the weekly, with the exception of October, when you're getting a show every day. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it this time around. So anyway, we're uh, you know still a couple of weeks and change out from the big day. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying their time. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the weather. I hope it, it is getting cool. And, I, you know, as I look out my window now, I see that leaves are starting to fall and it's got me really excited. Um, so spooky season is not only upon us, it is in full swing. And uh, be sure you are spreading the spooky joy out there. So until then, for day 14 of uh, the 31 Days of Halloween... Uh, I have been your pal Bo, and I will see you tomorrow.